Right, what's going on guys? Welcome to We Got A Problem. Now, I've come across the most insane video I've ever seen in my life. How Rachel Johnson, yes, the sister of Boris Johnson, can sit there and spew this nonsense is beyond me. She is literally a Marxist and will admit it before the end of the video. Let's check it out. We all remember Theresa May in her first speech as Prime Minister pledging to fight the burning injustices of inequality. And politicians of all stripes have championed the idea of social mobility, of creating equal opportunities for all, regardless of background. And yet, it just hasn't worked. As it stands in the UK, it would take five generations for poorer families to reach the average income. That's because people can't climb up in a society that's unequal. And in Britain, which by some measures is one of the most unequal countries in Europe, we have inequality levels that belong to the 1930s. Sorry guys, I had to stop that there. What in the actual fuck is she talking about? The UK has inequality levels of the 1930s while you sit there rich as fuck with a privileged job on the TV and a family of politicians. Did you even think that through, you worthless cum bucket? This woman is on a new level of demented. Let's continue. We're only a minute in, not even a minute in. You can't tackle social mobility when there are such wide gaps between rich and poor, when half of England is owned by 1% of the population, when one in three children lives in poverty, when students from the top nine private schools are 94 times more likely to join the British elite than children educated anywhere else. As a policy objective, social mobility has failed. Switching our focus to social justice and wealth redistribution is far more likely to address those burning injustices across the nation. So there we hear the true communist ideas. She wants social justice to facilitate wealth redistribution. Sure, we have seen that somewhere before in history. Pretty sure it didn't end well either. Where does the mainstream media find these people? Taking people's hard-earned money off them is going to address the burning injustices in society. How can it address injustices by causing another group a clear injustice? You know, the people whose money and stuff you're going to take off them. Did you even think about that before you said it? Idiot. Now let's hear from a voice of reason. Well, that's a statistic. One in three children live in poverty. Define poverty. So this is not a new statistic. This has been around for quite a while and okay. it's something that actually we could look at. Um, but how much is it? What's, what's we could, poverty per week, per month, per We hour? could look at the UN Special, Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights, Philip Alston, um, because he well, actually... I don't believe the figure, by the way. He Let actually, me come at this a different way. He actually you proved to me that figure's not a load of cobblers. He introduced... Well, it's a UN <laughs> report. No, but Do you give, me the, me give to... me the money. Give me no, how much... Just the answer for fact is it's 60% of median earnings. Six, That's the what, definition. Do we know what median earnings is? Is that 20-something thousand? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. 20, so 27, 28,000. So, so we're talking about 16, 16 17,000 pounds per annum, right? And that's poverty. Tell that to the pensioners watching this. Well fucking done, mate. Tell that commie spunk trumpet hard facts of life. How rich and out of touch do you actually have to be to think that 17 grand a year is poverty and then spout that nonsense on TV to an audience that in a lot of cases may be on less than 17 grand a year, including pensioners, as Nick said. What a disgrace. Do you notice, though, when he asks her to define poverty, she goes around the houses before the other panellist has to point out that it's 70% of median earnings, or £17,000 roughly. You can tell this guy is almost as disgusted with a pincushion as I am. Nick, I feel like you're not really living in this country if you don't understand the rate of poverty that people are experiencing. I don't, I don't know, because reality. you look up, and down, up and down the country, Nick. We have people who are living in poverty. poverty. Let's have a listen to what Philip Alston said. He is the UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights. Let's have a listen to what sure. he said. The results of the austerity experiment are crystal clear. There are 14 million people living in poverty, record levels of hunger and homelessness, falling life expectancy for some groups, ever fewer community services, and greatly reduced policing. UK standards of well-being have descended precipitately 
in a remarkably short period of time as a result of deliberate policy choices made when many other options are available. So what he has said is that this is a choice that, that you know, one of the most frustrating things about looking at the level of um, hardship in this country, because we have an economy that isn't working for most people. And one of the most frustrating things about that is that sense of inevitability. It doesn't actually have to be that way. We can reprogram the economy to make it work in a way that is fairer for all people. And the reason and going back to my original subject, the reason that social mobility hasn't worked in the UK is that, right. it, that it has failed, is that you cannot have social mobility in a society right. where is, there is such... Well, the Jeremy Corbyn where... Memorial Lecture is now over. <laughs> I'm telling you this, £17,000 <laughs> nice per annum. To the end of 17, pounds per annum is it not really sounds like you poverty. Engaged for the well, I'll just tell you honestly. The Jeremy Corbyn Memorial Lecture is now over. Now, that's how you shut down a delusional commie tart. How this dopey pipe cleaner can sit there saying Nick is not living in this country when he, like most people, does not think £17,000 a year is extreme poverty. I would say it's her who does not live in this country or even on this fucking planet. She's clearly away with the fairies with that silver spoon rammed firmly right up her ass. She claims the economy is not working. I would say it works for the people who make the effort. But her opinion is heavily biased since what she really wants is a Marxist economy. Reprogram the economy, she says. How? By taking away land and money from people who have earned it over the years and give it to your commie buddies? You're starting to sound like Stalin, love. That model has been tried before and it does not end well. I am still baffled how Sky can let this complete tit on the TV. The most important and significant boost to social mobility in this society came through the 1970s, 1980s and 1990s. And it came for, don't shake your head, it's true. It came for a very specific reason, which was that there was a massive expansion in the need for white collar jobs. That is why people like me and probably other people around this table got to university and got professional jobs. My family were people who worked in uniforms, you know, the reason I was able to get in was because there was an expansion and a change in the economy. It had very little to do with things you're talking about. The question we've got to deal with now is how do we make sure that we keep that going? What you seem to be proposing is that, you know, we're in a building, we're all on the ground floor. What you want to do is to take away the stairs so nobody can climb to the second floor, but simply just bring down the second floor to the same level and bring up the basement we're to the same... We're not all on the ground floor. That's precisely the point. Well, but, we're but, not all so, on the ground okay, floor well, look, because privilege but, reproduces but, but, but Rachel, privilege. Rachel, why don't we you be honest? Invisible, why don't we you have... be honest? If what you want to do is to say, let's soak the bloody rich, let's take their land away, let's tax them to the hilt, I am actually rather with you on that. What I can't stand, <laughs> what, I can't, what I can't stand is this sort of, this kind of mimsy, oh, we're, we're going to do something about social justice. If what you want to do is attack privilege, say that's what you want to do. So you see in that clip, the Corbynoff spunk trumpet absolutely hates that capitalism and the economic growth it produces got Trevor Phillips to his current position in life by his own admissions. He is right when he says she wants to bring everyone down to the ground floor. But she's not on the ground floor. She's far from the ground floor. I doubt she will want to go and work in the factory doing manual labour like everyone else. This woman is completely demented. Now I'm glad Trevor calls her out for her real motive, which is to steal people's money. Not realising she would be one of the rich people who would lose her money and property. Let's okay, hear from so the rich. Let's hear from the rich. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they? Where's the rich? Um, um, the building. Are you saying, because you're talking about changing um, entire economic... So are you anti-capitalist? Is that what we're talking about? That's a good saying, question, because I was wondering that. Yeah. When you, when you are you an anti-capitalist? Yeah. So that's, that's precisely mm. the point. It's about... I actually think when we talk about social mobility, it's interesting because we always... Wait. Yes or no would be... I'm going to answer that question, I promise, because when we talk about social mobility, we always talk about it in terms of people from poorer backgrounds going upwards. We never talk about privileged people having to let go of a bit of their privilege so they're not, not reproducing it. For some people to come up, some people have to come down. So we hear from Michelle Dubry. She's asking the commie shit weasel Rachel Johnson if she is against capitalism which she tries to go around the houses to avoid answering before the other panellists prompt her to answer yes or no, which even though she said she would answer, she still didn't actually even answer yes or no. Classic deflection tactic used by shit weasels today. I, I found, um, I've followed this debate with interest in terms of moving away from the word social mobility to the word social justice. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think, if I correct me if I'm wrong, so now we want to replace a social mobility commission with a social justice commission. 
Is that right? Yeah. Which to me is going full circle because the social, um, the social mobility commission used to be called the child poverty commission, mm -hmm. which then went on to social mobility and is now going social justice. And it is a fact that you can't have social justice without social mobility. Social, you've got to tackle social mobility, social economics, um, and social, sorry, social exclusion and poverty. And I just feel a little <laughs> bit like, what's going on? I don't know. I don't know. Is we are using these trendy words to pitch us against them and them against you and they are bad and you are good and we're going to be the saviors that's going to fix this and i just find it a little bit but also can i just your question i think was a really pertinent one because what what i don't understand is what what about what you just said in response to michelle's question did tony blair not do public spending went up when he became 97 uh when he came in it went up from 35 percent and then over the course of that next decade to 45 percent what is it he did not do that you're not happy with he, this is the he terrible... maintained an economic system that, exagger but, but that exaggerated that system, the no, I economy. no i don't agree with a free market just, neoliberal just one system. Sentence. it exaggerated inequalities you'd have to listen yeah. to me as ft yeah. the ft reported that during new labor's rule so what system would you want there was inequality increased what this, system system would you want? Want? this is this is a terrible thing about about the Corbynistas. You want to bury Tony Blair, I don't. but you, but, but you, but you cannot him. bring yourselves to have the courage simply to say, we're Marxists, we want everything uh, changed, let's kill it. Uh, Just say it. Yeah. You might, you might get an audience. I mean, don't pretend yeah. you're saying something that you're not. I don't have a problem with um, <laughs> Marxist <laughs> economic systems. Uh -huh. and I, neither yeah, do I have any problem with crediting Tony Blair for introducing things like Short right. Star. It's not either or. When Michelle brings up their leftist wish to turn the Social Mobility Commission into a Social Justice Commission, you can see how uncomfortable she is when answering. Touching her hair as she's saying yes to the Social Justice Commission is a sign that someone's a little bit uncomfortable, and she knows most people consider social justice to be the complete cancer that it is. Now don't worry love, you don't need to hide it. We know you are one of these radical social justice warriors screaming outrage at everything you disagree with to further your socialist agenda. Now Michelle also calls out the trendy words being used. In other words, virtue signaling and smear campaigns calling racists or sexists or this or that. That is all the left has. They don't have a factual argument to put forward, so they have to result to personal attacks and smear attempts. The Ramoning left is doing it daily. The next PM will have to go through another month of it before they even get the job. When Majid calls out the fact that Blair did everything this woman is asking for over 15 years ago, I mean, it's common knowledge, really, that Blair increased public f spending by a lot. Her true Marxist colours come to the fore. It's nothing to do with social mobility. It's to do with her Marxist ideology. I mean, she fully admits to liking Marxist economic systems. This Marxist spunk trumpet should move to a communist country. We don't want it here. Now, no wonder this video only has 4,000 views on the Sky's YouTube channel. It's a complete mind-melting clusterfuck. Nick Ferrari nails it, though. His head hurts listening to this complete shit, and so does mine. So I'm going to end the video there. I really can't take much more of listening to her, to be honest with you. Now let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and share the video as it helps the channel a lot. And I'll see you all in the next one.